Hi everyone, welcome to the Secret Forest Base Camp, which I'm just leaving now and heading out on trail into the rainforest. I'm currently at a camp along the Tambopata River in southeast Peru, where I've been for just a little over a month now. And aside from that, today I'm gonna to be talking about my experience of receiving gene therapy. First off, I need to navigate this bird net. This is one of the capture methods used here at the research camp for recording birds in the area. I helped set these up the other day. Anyway, enough about the rainforest stuff for now. I'll get back to that, as I think it's important in context of what gene therapy has allowed me to do. So, I'm gonna head off into the jungle a bit, set up there and share a bit about my experience of receiving gene therapy just over two years ago now, which is crazy to think, especially when I reflect on all that happened in those first two years. So that's something I wanna talk about today. Anyway, time to test the ankles <laughs> and navigate through this extremely thick mud before I get into the forest, so. I'll be right back. Ah, here we go. Bit of a break in the canopy here. Get some nice light through. That's one thing when you're in the dense forest. It's a fairly dark place even during the day. So. This little opening here should serve well for my presentation, or oh, presentation. <laughs> no slides here today, I'm afraid. Scan for bullet ants and other nasty, creepy crawlies. No dangerous looking snakes. So this should make a nice little spot for me to sit down and talk about my gene therapy experience. So, I guess I'll start off by properly introducing myself as I haven't yet done so. So my name's Luke Pembroke and I live in London in the UK. But of course at the moment I am in the southeast of Peru in the Amazon jungle where I've been for just over a month now. Uh, I'll soon be leaving unfortunately but spending a couple more weeks traveling around Peru and doing some more exploring including hiking the Inca Trail to Machu Picchu which again, should be a nice test on the old ankles, but I'm looking forward to the challenge. And I guess this is the first time that I've been able to get out into the world and really put gene therapy to the test because I received gene therapy in February, 2020, uh, roughly around a month before the UK went into lockdown and the world was plunged into a pandemic. I'd received the gene therapy and then started on the um, prophylactic immunosuppression as part of the trial uh, about a week and a half before the lockdown was imposed. So my first year of the trial is definitely a very subjective and unique experience. I think everyone's experience of gene therapy is a subjective experience and I really hope that we see more stories of people who've been through this process showcased. I'm gonna talk about the initial experience of going through the trial and then fast forward a bit to what I'm up to now and how gene therapy has impacted and changed my life. And I think being here in the rainforest is a really poignant setting for my talk about gene therapy as I've been here for just over a month and haemophilia really hasn't crossed my mind. I mean, I've had to cycle ice packs between a cool box to keep my emergency factor treatments ready, but I haven't needed to touch them aside from that. I haven't received a dose of factor since receiving gene therapy over two years ago now. And it's crazy to think that it's been that long already. The first year went very slowly and the second year seemed to fly by. And now I'm back out in the world doing things that I love and doing it without the overshadowing presence of severe haemophilia. So at present, my levels are in the mild haemophilia range, uh, bouncing around the sort of 20 to 25% level. 
And of course, this means I'm not reliant on prophylaxis anymore, which is a game changer for me. I haven't had to bring an extra massive suitcase of factor with me traveling, which I'm sure those of you out there who've experienced that uh, know how frustrating it can be. And I was able to get my emergency factor into my camera equipment bag, so that was nice. After receiving the gene therapy, the following year and particularly the first six months were so intense. Granted, the pandemic intensified that, but the one thing I always express to people is just how much of a tough time I had on the immunosuppression. So my trial involved taking prednisolone, so corticosteroids, and tacrolimus, um, which is often used in people who've had organ transplants to prevent organ rejection. And the combination of those two medications made me feel the most ill I've ever felt in my life. I knew that there were side effects that were possible and that it varied in how severely you got them. But uh, it kind of blew over me a bit. I was like, okay, I'm going to get some side effects. They're, they're not going to be great. They're going to be pretty unpleasant. But they really did um, impact me in a big way, both physically and mentally. And trying to deal with all of that whilst also being in isolation and shielding was extremely, extremely tough. The haemophilia center very much became my second home and I was relocated to a, a temporary accommodation close by to the hospital as well to minimize any risk of catching COVID because if I was having to travel through London to the hospital, it would have been far too risky. I think another thing that's really important to say is that maybe people think of gene therapy as you go get it and you have a couple of blood tests afterwards and then you're free to the world and uh, you pop back into the center now and again. It very much was more structured than that. There were a large number of visits that I had to do in those early months and you don't escape the needles by any means. I mean, I've probably in the last two years had more uh, injections into my veins than I had done in years previous, but except this time they're taking blood out rather than putting stuff in. So a nice change to have, but uh, yeah, your veins definitely don't have a rest uh, for the first uh, few months of the trial. So another thing that's worth bearing in mind. Of course, now at the two year plus mark, I'm down to twice a year visits and the next time I'll be in will be towards the end of summer, I guess. So back to what it used to be pre-gene therapy. So I've spoken quite in depth over the last couple of years about my experience in the first two years of the trial, having received gene therapy. And if you're interested in that sort of stuff and want to find out more detail, then I have videos on my YouTube channel. I gave a presentation for EHAD. Uh, and they were kind enough to let me upload it to my channel. So I really recommend you, you watch that if you want to find out a bit more of the nitty gritty detail about the intensity of the trial. But switching away from that now, I want to talk about what gene therapy has enabled me to do and how it's changed my life. And I guess this is a, an opportunity for me myself to sit down and really think about what gene therapy has enabled me to do. And I mean, look where I am now. I'm in the middle of the Amazon rainforest. I've been working on my nature photography skills with some really talented people here. And I've been helping out with some of the research that this foundation does here across the different groups of animals. And haemophilia has just been the furthest thing from my mind. This is the first time I'm really sitting down since being here to think about my haemophilia. Of course, I've mentioned it to people um, around the camp that I had it and I had this uh, trial treatment called gene therapy. And again, it comes back to that uh, recognition that haemophilia is still a really rare condition and most people still haven't heard of it or really don't understand it if they have heard the word haemophilia. So I've sort of kept my ex explanations relatively brief and just got on with being a normal person <laughs> around the camp and, and doing all the things that everyone else is doing. This trip has given me the opportunity to truly road test the gene therapy and I'm very happy of the results. As I mentioned earlier, the trails here can be really intense on the ankles and I still get the ankle pain from these tricky to navigate trails, but I've been getting back to camp. I've been resting up, taking my painkillers and then waking up the next day and my ankle feels ready to go again. I guess I've become pretty accustomed to pushing through a certain level of pain, but also in the past, I'd associate that with needing to be really careful and keeping an eye on it and looking out for a bleed. Whereas now 
Uh, I have not had to think about it that intensely. And I'm, I'm pretty confident with the experience I had living with haemophilia up until receiving gene therapy, what a bleed feels like, what chronic arthropathy feels like. And I have just been able to get on with things normally here and not worry about the looming possibility of having a bleed, which could potentially ruin a significant proportion of my trip. It just hasn't been something I've had to worry about or think about. And I think that mental freedom is probably the thing that's really changed the most for me. But it happens so passively. I'm just out there doing things. And I don't really think, oh, wow, I'm doing this without severe haemophilia. I'm doing this without needing factor. I just go and do it. And it's only when I sit down and give talks and think about it deeply that I recognize, wow, gene therapy has really made such a huge difference for me. There are so many things that I dedicated a fair proportion of my time to when I was managing my haemophilia full time that I just don't have to do now. And that freedom and liberation from my condition is something that I can't really put into words, but it just means so much. So thinking of bringing this talk to a close, I wanted to address some of the more common questions I've received over the past couple of years. And one of those is regarding risks and long-term effects that potentially may crop up and the unknowns and how much that dominates my thinking or concerns me. And whilst I'm aware of it, and I know that there's always a possibility that things could crop up in the future that we don't know about, that was a risk I was willing to take when I signed up for gene therapy. I understood that the consenting process for me was very clear. And I made that risk benefit assessment as an individual patient and person with haemophilia. And I was willing to still get involved in a gene therapy trial. It seemed like a worthwhile thing to do for me. And these concerns around risks don't dominate my thoughts. I think if I let that happen, I'd forget to actually enjoy what gene therapy is currently doing for me. And of course, another big question I get is, would you do it all again? Um, and the answer is always yes. And I hope it will remain that way. I mean, my biggest concern uh, or worry regarding gene therapy is if it wore off. I mean, I've experienced what it's like to live with mild haemophilia and contrast that to what it's like living with severe haemophilia is, is a huge difference for me. So. If I ended up back where I was, uh, there's no escaping the fact I'd be very disappointed in a lot of ways. And I think I'd be concerned about readapting to going back to needing to take prophylaxis. Given my past results and the way things have gone, I'm fairly confident that I've reached a stable level and I hope it continues long term. But that's why I've signed up to this trial. This is what we need to find out. If we want gene therapy to be a possibility, a truly life-changing treatment option for people. We need people to sign up to trials. We need people to dedicate their time. And, and we need the long-term data. It's so important. It's so important that I remain committed to this trial, even though the hardest part is out the way. I'll still be going into my haemophilia centre. I'll still be keeping them up to date with everything that I do and making sure that we get this long-term data to really see how successful gene therapy can be and I, I i remain so positive about the prospect of gene therapy and genetic medicines moving forwards in not only haemophilia but for other conditions and if my you know small contribution as a trial participant has added to the bigger picture and helping us develop and fine-tune these treatments for future generations then I'm very happy to have done so. So I really don't have any regrets regarding my participation in this trial. Of course, it has been really tough at times. That first year in particular was really intense, really tested my mental mettle and it wasn't easy. And at times I caught myself thinking, you know, what have I got myself into? What am I doing here? Um, I really hope this pays off. And there were so many reasons for taking part in the trial and I just had to recall those and remember why I'd done this in the first place and 
recognizing that it really is a, a worthwhile thing for me to have done and I'm, and I'm glad I did do it. So no, no regrets and I would do it all over again, 100%. Living life with haemophilia is not easy. We're a very resilient and tough community and I think we often make it seem like a lot of the things we go through is water off a duck's back, as we say in the UK, and that we make things that are actually pretty intense seem like not a big deal. You know, sitting down and injecting yourself with factor and finding a vein and learning that skill and planning a lot of things in advance around your haemophilia, we kind of just go, yeah, you know, that's part of my life, that's part of my routine. A lot of people say taking factor, it just becomes like brushing your teeth. But when you really think about it, it's not a pleasant thing to do. And, and I commend this community of, of people in the world of bleeding disorders for often remaining so positive about the condition. But I think it's important to recognize that haemophilia does come with its challenges. And whilst I had to go through some really intense periods during this clinical trial that tested me physically, mentally, emotionally, socially, the way I see it is it's just another chapter in that haemophilia life story that we all have. And if anything, going through the intense trial in that first year just showed me how strong I can be and how resilient I am because of my haemophilia. When I look at the people in our community out there, we really are able to deal with so much that is thrown at us. There is still so much to do in the area of gene therapy. I know that, we all know that. It needs to be fine tuned, it needs to be worked on to become more acceptable for a wider group of people. I think the impact it can have on people's lives is huge when it's fully realized. But we'll only get there by continuing to do what we've been doing. And being thorough in our research and having these discussions and listening to people's experiences and learning more about the wider gene therapy picture. And I'm really excited to see what the future holds for gene therapy. And I'm really happy that I played a small part in that in, in some way. So no regrets. And thank you for listening to me ramble on about my gene therapy experience. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of this Congress wherever you are watching.